Hello and welcome to Recall Knowledge Foundry VTT, where we give you all the information you need to critically succeed at making the most of the Pathfinder 2nd Edition system itself. I am GM Steve, and in this episode I will be walking you through what it takes to make a character from scratch for Pathfinder 2nd Edition in Foundry Virtual Tabletop. Note, this video is recorded on Foundry version 8.8, .8 and PF2E version 2.10.1.7007. If you are watching from the future, be warned, some of this is subject to change. The system is under heavy active development. So first things first, your GM is going to have to log into Foundry like this, select the Game Master account and log in. Once there, you're gonna have to create the actor in the Actors tab. It's up here in the upper right. It looks like three people. We're going to click Create Actor. The type is player character. And in this case, we're making the character name Mukta. Next, you're going to have to set permissions. So as the GM, go to Configure Permissions. And I have one player account created. So for that player, I'm going to make them the owner so they can now see that character. Now I'm going to switch over and I'm going to log out and back in to the player account. When they log in, they can select one of the characters here actually assigned to them, in this case, Mukta. And now that player is connected to that character. So up here, we as a player now will go back to that same tab and we will now see Mukta under there, which is our character. We can click that and open our character sheet. With all of that set up and out of the way, now let's dig into how to make the character itself. First thing we're gonna do, open up your character sheet. Next, we're going to follow the ABCs, Ancestry, Background, Class. So for the Ancestry, you will notice on your tab right here, you have the Ancestry box that's currently empty. There is this little plus sign next to it. So this is the easiest way to get a quick list of all the Ancestries. I will click that plus. It's going to pop up the compendium with all the Ancestries that are currently existing in the Pathfinder system. In this case, we are going to pick Ratfolk. So I will choose Ratfolk. And I will take this Ratfolk name here, and I'm going to drag it right into the Ancestry box. And now our character is officially a Ratfolk. You can see the size is set, the speed, we got low light vision, we got the Ratfolk trait, all that stuff automatically created just by dragging and dropping. For our heritage in the box, note it's just a freeform field. So for the heritage, Mukta is going to be a desert rat. So I'm going to write desert rat into that box for now. In a little bit, we will add our heritage features, but we will get to that. For now, our ancestry is locked in. Let's move on to the B's backgrounds. So for the background compendium, all we got to do, go back to our character sheet, click the backgrounds as a plus. In this case, Mukta is a scout. So there's a long list here. So what I'm going to do at the top is I'm going to type SCO and kind of filter it down. And I see scout, pick that up drag and drop it into the backgrounds. And now Scout is set as the background for my sweet, sweet Mukta. That's it for backgrounds. We're gonna move on to the Cs, which is class. So by hitting this plus sign, we are now going to get all the classes in the compendium. So I know that Mukta is a rogue. I will find the rogue. I will drag and drop it to the class box. And now you see Mukta is completely filled up all these things his AC, his perception, his saves, everything is trained just with a few simple drags. You can see here at the top where all these tabs are. The first tab is character, and that's the one that we've been building the character so far. At this point, let's tab over to this tab here, which is called the feats tab. It looks like the little metal, second from the right. Now, as you can see here in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, they've made the character sheet to show you at each level what spot you have a feat that's missing. So in this case, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, choose some of the rogue class features that we were missing. If you look at here for the class features, we have this rogues racket. If we open it, we can see as a rogue, we get to pick a racket at first level that kind of defines this. Here are quick, you know, links to all the different versions. Mook does a thief rogue. So if I click this, I can see the thief racket, get all the information I need. All I need to do is take this thief racket drag it back into Mukta himself. And now Mukta has the thief racket added to his class features, including 
things like being trained in thievery. And if I go over here to the proficiencies tab, we will see my thievery is currently trained thanks to that selection. So now that I've selected my rogues racket, I don't need this class feature anymore. I can go ahead and delete that off my sheet. So now that we have the thief racket chosen, let's move on to the heritage. We filled it out earlier, but now we actually need to populate it so it has the features associated with that heritage. So I will find the compendiums tab, which looks like a book, second from the right on the top. I will find the ancestry features compendium here. And in this list, we know we're looking for desert rat. So I will type desert and I see, we see desert rat and desert elf. I will drag desert rat to the character sheet. And we will now see that under the ancestry features, we get the desert rat. So now with our heritage feature added, we're ready to go back to the character tab and fill out the rest of the info, including our stats. We can see now that just by dragging and dropping the ancestry and the class and the background, all of our basic abilities are filled out for us. Our maximum hit points, our armor class, all of our saves, all of these tags are all set up automatically just with those drag and drops. So next step, let's do our stats. You know, Pathfinder 2nd Edition, your character gets stat boosts based on the class, background, ancestries, all of that. At this point, all you need to do is manually type those stats that you've chosen into your character stats. So for Mukta, we are going to leave our strength as 10. As a rogue, we are going to set our dexterity to 18. Our constitution is going to be 12. Our intelligence is going to be 14. Our wisdom is also 14. And our charisma. And because we're a rogue, we want to make sure to change our key ability to dexterity so that our class DC is reflected properly. Now that our stats are locked in, let's check out our skills. On the character sheet, you will find a tab called proficiencies. This tab lists all the proficiencies in the Pathfinder 2nd Edition system, and all you have to do is set them with a simple click. It goes like this. We can see already that Mukta has stealth because rogues get stealth by default, and thievery because of our thieves racket we chose. So, rogues get seven plus int modifier skills with a 14 intelligence. That means we get nine skills to choose on top of these ones that are already chosen for us. There's one more step here that you might not want to miss, and that is your backgrounds. As of this current build, backgrounds are not set automatically when they drag and drop. So because our scout background made us trained in survival, I will add that before we get to pick our nine more skills. If you want to train a skill, you can see on this box that says untrained. All I have to do is click it once, a left click, and that advances it from untrained up to trained. If you click it again, it moves up from trained to expert. And if you need to sh move it back one level, all you have to do is right click and it goes back down, in this case from expert, back down to trained. Okay, let's pick our nine more skills. For Mukta, this is going to be acrobatics, athletics, Deception, Intimidation, Nature, Performance, Crafting, Medicine, and actually he's going to pick Desert Lore. Lores are open-ended in that there is no finite amount of them. You can have lore in anything open-ended on your character sheet. So the character sheet allows us to do that. All you need to do is click this Add button under Lore Skills. In this case, we're going to start with desert lore and make it trained. And then as well, we're going to add cavern lore, mark that trained. And now Mukta has both the desert lore and the cavern lore skills on his character sheet. As for combat proficiencies, you can see down at the bottom, there's a whole section dedicated to them. These will be set up automatically based on all the choices you made earlier. But if you do need to make any changes, you can just click them, left click or right click to advance or one step back as needed. All right, up next, feats. What would Pathfinder be without feats? So in the next section, I'll show you how to choose them through the thousands that exist in the system. We're going to go back to the feats tab. And now that we look closer, you can see at the bottom, we have an ancestry feat with a one and it says empty slot a class feat with a one in an empty slot, and a skills feat, this is one in an empty slot. The number here, one, represents the level that you would have that feat at. 
and the uh, empty slot just lets us know we haven't chosen something yet. So let's choose the feats for Mukta to finish them off. For a class feat, the first thing I'm going to do is click the uh, icon here, the magnifying glass. So now that we have the compendium browser open, let's adjust the filter to show just feats that are relevant to our character. So under feat types, I'm going to choose class feats. Under levels, I'm going to restrict it from one to one. And under classes, since we're building a rogue, I'm going to choose rogue. So that gives us the following feats on the right hand side. For Mukta, because he's got a very paranoid personality, he's going to take Trap Finder and drag that into his class feats section here. And now it's locked in and good to go. Now let's move on to picking our ancestry feat. So like before, we're going to click the magnifying glass here to open the compendium browser. Under feat types, I'm going to select ancestry feats. Under levels, I'm going to restrict it one to one. And under ancestries, I'm going to choose rat folk. Now we're going to get over here, all of the rat folk feats that are applicable for my character at level one. In this case, for Mukta, we're going to pick Warren Navigator. Spending time in the desert, he is very good at finding his way through uh, caverns and mazes. And just like that, the ancestry feat is locked in. Next, we're going to pick our skill feat. Now, the skill feat list can be pretty big. Luckily, with the filters, we're going to be able to narrow it down. So under feat type, we're going to choose skill feats. Under levels, you guessed it, one to one. And under, uh, actually, I guess that's all the filters we need for skill feats. On the right, we're going to see all the, fil all the feats. So there's a lot of them. So I know what skill I want is to boost. So under skills, I'm going to narrow this list down by picking athletics, which now gives us all of these choices. I'm going to pick the hefty hauler. And just like that, all of our feats are chosen. Up next, equipment, because what would an adventurer be without their equipment? Here, I will show you the easiest way to get started by using class kits. So under the inventory tab, we will see uh, poor Mukta has nothing right now. Right, So I'm going to come back here to the Compendium Browser. I'm going to select the Equipment tab up here now. And there's a toggle here for Inventory Types that says Kit. I'm just going to toggle it on. And we can see all the class kits. Because Mukta is a rogue, all I'm going to do is drag the class kit rogue to the character sheet. And a second later, you will see it populate. There we go. It not only gives you all the starting equipment that you would get, it also gives you the starting gold. In this case, we start with eight gold and eight silver on top of all the equipment. At this point, what you're going to want to do is make sure to equip your gear. So under this equipment tab, we will then see um, for the rapier, I will toggle that as an equipped. As the leather armor, you will see right now my AC 17. When I add this equipped, my armor bumps up to 18. And last, a very important kind of note, because you have a backpack that is full of equipment, I can see my bulk is currently four. If I wear the backpack, my bulk goes down to three because a backpack, when equipped, reduces its encumbrance by two. And in this case, the backpack now weighs nothing. From here, just to make sure we're set up, we're going to move over to our Actions tab, which is next to the Character tab. So because we've equipped the Rapier, we can see that it is here in our Strikes list. As well, you can see down here there is a spot for actions, reactions, and free actions. It's a good idea to add some of the basic actions that you may need playing. Um, I'm not going to go through and show you how to add them all because there's a big list of actions that your character could do, but I'm going to show you real quick how to do it. So for Mukta, we're going to add the most important skill that he will ever need, hide. So from here, we can just click this magnifying glass. It'll pop open the compendium browser straight to the actions tab. In this case, I'm going to type hide and I can see the hide action. If I drag this to Mukta sheet, you can now see we have the hide action right there on this character sheet. So if I was to click this, I can send the details for the hide action to the chat box here on the right so that you, your GM, all the other players will know exactly how it goes. All right, the last thing we wanna do is we wanna set up our character's token. So what you're gonna need to do is send the GM your artwork you wish to use. They're gonna upload it into the server. Once it's there, they can tell you where it is and you can choose it. In this case, on the character sheet, under the character section, I'm going to select this portrait here. I'm going to change this view to show me icons. 
instead of names. And I'm going to tab up to the top level, and I will see down here Mukta's token. I will select it. And now, just like that, Mukta has artwork. Mukta is ready to go. If my GM was to drag and drop Mukta to the play space, it will show this as my token. And that's it. In just a few minutes, we've taken Mukta, the Ratfolk Rogue, from concept to created using Pathfinder 2nd Edition system for the Foundry Virtual Tabletop. He's now ready to go on an amazing adventures with you and your friends. Now, stay tuned, because in future videos, I will cover how to do other, slightly more advanced things with the character sheet, including spellcasting, familiars, investing in your magical equipment, and even leveling up. Let me know in the comments down below if you learned something, and if there's a topic you'd like for me to cover in a future video. Hi, Steve from Recall Knowledge here. If you enjoyed this content, please make sure to like and subscribe down below so you can get notified of more awesome content coming your way. Also, make sure to follow our channel's Twitter, at Recall Knowledge, for the latest information. Thanks for watching.